everybody, welcome to Bish's RV. Josh the RV Nerd here with some updated footage on the White Hawk 29BH. This is a family camp and bunkhouse model that brings some really nice, like plush comfort features here. They have really become like a very premium looking kind of rig. They, I, I've always kind of liked how they, they do this model almost backwards of everybody else where they flip flop the living room and the kitchen. And the reason I like that, like if somebody wants to come in and out and like grab something out of the fridge or grab a snack, they don't walk past the entertainment center. They don't sort of break up the action that's going on. And that just makes sense to me. And behind that entertainment center, they're able to hide a huge bonus closet for the bedroom. And there's a lot of RVs in a layout like this that just frankly lack enough bedroom space for an extended trip. And this does not have that problem. Very handy if the kid stuff needs to kind of overflow into your personal storage space. Now we are carpetless, we're easy cleaning, we've got a vaulted ceiling for that open feeling in here. Dual Asdell walls is something that Whitehawks adopted a year or two ago. Tire pressure monitoring and wide stance stability axles to give you a little more comfort in towing, though I do still probably recommend a three quarter ton pickup. There are some half tons that are capable of making this uh, a safe journey down the road. A uh, little bit of factory solar is now standard. In case you weren't aware, White Hawks are zero to 100 degree rated, and turns out they basically always have been. A couple years ago, Jayco finally did the testing, but huh, we did better than we thought. How about that? True Queen bed up front, headboard power pockets for phone chargers, and all kinds of good things. Big XL vent fan in the living room if you want to get some airflow circulating around, like a lot of good details happen on this one, and that folding cargo bunk situation in the back. Now, it does have a couple hitches in its giddy up. It's what I'm gonna call two-stage travel access where you are going to need both doors to get through the whole thing. But giving you that kind of info, giving you those fair and real insights, that's my goal here to help you decide if we can get your second camper the first time or maybe it's the wrong one for you. And if you appreciate that, like our video, subscribe, all those YouTuber things, smash the buttons. And you know what occurs to me? It's been almost a full calendar year since I've walked through a Whitehawk 29BH. I kind of forgot how much I really like this one. And I think one of the differences is, like, there, there's a lot of brands that have a similar floor plan, but they'll swap the sofa and the dinette. They swap the kitchen and the living. And it feels more boxy and more closed in. This looks and feels just so comfortable and welcoming and, and calm and wide open. The open feeling vaulted ceiling certainly helping with that. The big skylight that we have up top here letting in that extra natural light gives you the perception of more space. And just the way that everything just kind of curls and wraps around. I, I really like it. They've also, uh, they're, they're carpetless here. And when the slide floor and the main floor match, to me, it always looks good. I am really liking this new dinette table here. I'll be very curious to see how that is received uh, in the RV industry as it starts to get out there to more and more owners. So it, it folds down and collapses. The, 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 the legs, basically, those things can store um, under the bed. The tabletop can still be used to fold down uh, into a sleeper, but the whole table is now free floating and it's very stable. So if you want to slide it over to use as extra prep space or maybe even pop it outside, you absolutely could. These are available with um, dual air conditioner, by the way. We're looking at one today that is single air, but dual air is most definitely available. And in, if you're not familiar with the Jayco family and the Jayco lineup, um, their, their laminated series starts with Jay Feather and then White Hawk picks up where Jay Feather leaves off. So things like the fireplace and the, and the true queen beds, some of the things that the feathers don't do, White Hawk does by default. That's why there's two different series, uh, of them. And, uh, if I slide back here a little bit, give you a look up top, you can see they really load this thing up with all kinds of lighting. Now, if you were sitting um, in the theater seat, like, you know, beside me right now, this is kind of your view. So when you're sitting down having a bite to eat, you're still like, you can still keep an eye on what's going on. You have limited campsite window coverage, but not zero necessarily. A little more would certainly be welcome. They did what they could there, but everyone really has a good shot at the entertainment center. Whereas a lot of RVs, only the people sitting at the, the sofa directly across from the TV really get a good look at anything. Um, and with your Jayco's, basically pretty much any time you get a theater seat, those little swivel stands come with it. That's, uh, I don't know if it's a Jayco exclusive thing or they have some kind of patent, but it seems like they're one of the only ones with that. Now, other manufacturers technically can have things like that, but uh, they essentially have to pay Jayco a royalty to do it. And if there's one thing manufacturers don't like to do, they don't like to pay one another royalties. So, <laughs> uh, again, true queen bed in here. And um, they did an interesting thing. And I'll fly, tell you, I don't like it. 
I, I'll tell you, and it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. This is just my opinion. I'm not an authority by any stretch. You see how they have those pockets by the headboard behind the hanging wardrobe towers? That's cool. White Hawk has had those for years. But they used to have power outlets back there. And unless I'm missing something, they no longer do. They still have household and USB plugs here. You may have actually noticed some household and USB plugs over here as well. They are very good about that. You know what? As long as we're talking about it, I'm going to slowly spin you around uh, and finish, I guess, looking at the rest of the outlets. I guess that's where my brain's going. But notice, you've got, you know, windows that are the size of the sofa over there. But over here, over the dinette, they tweaked this around and they greatly expanded that. You've got a one, two, three window section right there. Um, two of which open for some really nice airflow. Plus, you do have cross breeze windows uh, all through the RV, really giving you some nice airflow through the whole thing. And, you know, as long as we're standing back here, once again, like I said, it just has that big, expansive kind of look and feel to it. Uh, all your countertops are a sealed edge thermal foil. And notice the details like the little toe kick. If you want to really like belly right up to the, the stove and the oven and do some cooking, you can. They give us a pop-up power tower over there in the kitchen so short cord appliances uh, aren't so much of a problem. You know, so those extra little details that they're doing that I, I really like and I really appreciate. Like both the upper and lower bunks have household and USB outlets, which is kind of why I was turning around in the first place, and those little pockets there. And each of those beds is rated for 600 pounds. Um, so, uh, you know, adults can actually fit on those things. They do not have a window shade in the door from the factory, but, uh, those little slim shades are a very simple, easy thing to, uh, pop in there. Now, they've got a nice kitchen backsplash, still no stovetop side splash. Again, I like to share the good with the bad, uh, you know, as, just as it is. Now, this is kind of neat. The refrigerator this year can open from either direction, so it kind of doesn't matter which way you're coming from. It's uh, kind of, you know, it's easy to get in there. Um, you know what? Yeah, we, we started looking at the bedroom, and then I, squirrel, power outlets, and I, and I went flying around. Let's finish looking at the bedroom. One thing I do like, you can see the little window pole shade, uh, you know, strings and knobs hanging down. They do have blackout roller shades through the whole thing. We'll get a look at those in just a minute. I did mention it's a true queen bed. Uh, uh, once again, 50 amp service. These are available with a second air conditioner. You will sacrifice that ceiling vent, but then you get the, uh, the nice second air conditioner. And they give us both a cross breeze window and a window in the door. Again, no privacy shade in a bedroom. I'm not super enthused by that, but um, you know, again, it's an easy fix. And of course, TV hookups in the bedroom like campers have had since before I was even born. <laughs> oh, hold on. I'm gonna tilt you up a little bit, by the way. I forgot to mention, not only by default is this a vent, it does have a small fan. Now it's a basic fan, but it's a smaller room. And if you want to upgrade the fan, you know, the wiring's already done for you. Hangs, vortex fans are my nerd preferred go-to. But look at this, the extra closet space there and the extra dresser space. That is fantastic. Both sides of the bed do have their own hanging wardrobe towers, but built into the bed base, you have a pair of additional dresser drawers, which is really cool. Now, in this floor plane, you have a choice between a theater seat and a hide bed I'd be kind of curious, which way would you go? There is no sort of folding armrest on the theater seat, though, so if you are looking for that little bit of cuddle compliance, you are going to want to get the hide bed sofa. That's just how this one's going to play out. Um, the kitchen space, like, really good drawer space overall. Not a whole lot of like awesome opportunities for a wastebasket in this one, just because the way some of the engineering and like where they had to run some of the plumbing and stuff worked out. That's one of my only nitpicks with the kitchen of this one, but I feel like I could maybe find a way around it. I haven't really looked into it too far too deep. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe that'll just be one of those annoyances. Anybody who owns a 29BH actually watching this because it's a popular model there's tons of them out there if you could chime in and, and kind of share with the class basically where have you uh you know hidden your wastebasket or put your wastebasket in a model like this be kind of curious to know um they are using a split 50 50 sink by the way i personally give the nod to a farm sink i'd be uh, it seems like it's about a 60-40 thing. A, a, a few more people seem to prefer farm sinks uh, rather than the split sinks, but it's it, it, there's not a real clear consensus to that. Also, neat little detail. 
Bathroom door does lock, so if you do need a little bit of privacy and some sanity space while you're in here doing your business and washing your nether regions, well, you can do so without constantly having the fear of anxiety of somebody opening the door and you share your birthday suit with the neighbor. Because the kid invited the neighbor in. They're like, hey, mom, Mr. Thompson's in the camper next door. He wants to know if you want to come over for dinner. And then you're standing there and then he's looking at you and then everyone's awkward. And then we see me in the shower, and I'm just going to hard segue off of that because I don't know where I was going with this. What is awesome about the way they did the shower, with that vaulted ceiling, they put the shower head on the inside wall of the shower. You can see it just peeking up over there, or uh, toward the center of the camper, which gives you some awesome headroom. And this big white thing that's right in our face, um, that's where you could like maybe sit a couple of bottles of soap or something like that. But also, um, that's where you could hang a couple towels, which is awful handy. And I think we've just about got her licked. But before we can slap the stamp on it, we're going to have to close up the slide and check out that two-stage travel access. Which is just my nerdy little way of saying you're going to need both entry doors to pull it off. And some people get a little bit weirded out by having that uh, second entry door right in the bedroom. And not only does it help for travel access, but it helps for more than that. Like when you're sitting at your campsite. Remember the bunks are located right by the primary living room entry door on this RV? Uh, right over here by your bathroom, by the way. So if the kids are up and down at night using the bathroom, you can kind of try to sleep well. And if you happen to get up and disturb them, well, then everyone's going to have a bad day tomorrow. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is if the kids are sitting right here and the kids are asleep and you come and go from this door, and as any of us with experience know, sometimes with RV entry doors, you got to smack them upside the head like a stubborn mule to get them to shut properly. You kind of shake the camper, you make a lot of noise, you don't want to wake up the kids and disturb them. That's where, if you stay up late and you hang out by the fire, having the second door can be awful handy. Now, I think when a lot of people read these weights and measures, they're going to say, I'm kind of surprised you don't just say it's half ton towable all day long. And there was definitely a time in my career where I would. 8,500 pounds maximum gross vehicle weight. Um... Yeah, that sounds very half-ton towable for, you know, late model tow package half-ton, something like that. But, um, things to keep in mind. Uh, you start going through major elevation changes, and the uh, air thins out, and your horsepower goes into like half of what it usually is. That changes the equation dramatically. Now, uh, up front here, you see 30-pound propane tanks. Mm, lot of builders. A lot of builders still doing 20s even on their higher end products, you know. Now, 20s are nice. They're easy to exchange. The 30-pounders, though, they give you more juice, basically. Uh, slam latch baggage doors and big pass-through compartment with big baggage doors on both sides. I really like... Look at the ceiling. I love it when a manufacturer takes the time to really clean up and finish stuff, um, even in a pass-through compartment. I wondered why that looked funny. I didn't properly fully extend the bedroom triple steps. It's a good thing I didn't walk backwards outside down that thing. I'd have, you know, gone backside over tea kettle on that sucker out there. Um, the windows, you can see, all heavily tinted, frameless. It uh, gives you a lot of that nice privacy, helps keep a little bit of that sunshine out. And the awning's not small. It's just the sidewall of the RV is big. And that's one of the other reasons I'm a little hesitant just to go whole hog and say, full send, brother, let's half ton it, um, because of the length of the RV. Although, the wide stance stability axles that we're looking at right here, they do certainly help uh, what I call cheat the wheelbase. When the axles are spread further apart like that, it will make the RV tow and feel like it's a little bit shorter than it actually is. Um, I, ooh, I really like the location of that main entry door, like dead in the middle of that big awning too. So if you want to go in and out on a rainy day, you're not constantly getting uh, rainwater in the face. Now they've revised their camp kitchens in the whole Jayco, Jay Feather, White Hawk lineup uh, this year. Feather is like White Hawk's little brother, in case you weren't aware. Sometimes people don't know the relationship. It still comes with a griddle and everything, but last year all they had was that weird dog dish, not really a sink. So what they did here, and I didn't set this up, I wanted you to get to see they actually include a place for all this to ship and store going down the road now, which is nice. They didn't do that before. You had to throw all the stuff in your front pass-through. You do still have a water hookup over here. Now this is all galvanized rolled steel. You're still going to want to be careful of a little bit of drippy water. Wait a minute. I didn't notice this before. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, it's a magnet. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. I was I was not expecting that. That was a smart use of space. No space gone to waste. Household USB outlets and um, 
Apparently, drunken octopus fight club going on above the water hookup. I'm guessing for like a rag or something like that. Anyway, but they've revised that. Now, the griddle mounts on the bumper where you see that extra little bracket sitting on the square bumper tube back there. And, of course, we have that cargo bunk arrangement right here. Now, the cargo bunk door does deadbolt for security reasons. Am I crazy? I don't remember that rear wall window there last year. Am I cr just forgetting? Huh, I don't know. I like it. I'm glad that it's there. But anyway, I do also really like how they include some cargo tie downs right here. And it's just those extra little details that kind of take this one, uh, you know, the next step up over the top for me. One thing that's also uh, harder to see because they put that nice spare tire cover on there is that you have not just Goodyear Endurance radials on the ground. You have a Goodyear spare. And those are those extra little details a lot of brands simply don't include. It's a single sewer outlet with some really nice ground clearance going on right there, especially handy on a longer RV like this where you don't want to drag things. And on the back side of the Udinet right here, I love that big triple pane window that they have now. I mean, triple pane meaning not triple pane thick, but one, two, three, there's three windows basically all kind of joined in to look like one window. Um, almost like an, uh, you know, a seafaring super organism or something like that. I don't know what I'm going for here. It seemed right. Now you may notice a lot of brands have discontinued the inclusion of those slide awning prep brackets. Does that mean these can't accept slide awnings anymore? No, they most definitely can still accept slide awnings. Uh, they pretty much always could. It just was kind of a marketing thing to include those brackets, but apparently that has, I don't know, run its course or something? I'm not sure. I mentioned when the video began, but these are zero to 100 degree rated, tested, proven, which is awesome. Underbelly's enclosed and forced air heated. And I feel like I'm missing some, oh yeah. Asdell, you are, uh, the Whitehawks didn't used to do this, and a lot of people are still not aware. The inside and outside layers of your laminated sidewalls, or the lamwich, as you as it were, is now Asdell. It's a composite, like, plastic resin material instead of wood. So it just helps the RV not be quite as vulnerable to water intrusion. Although, man, keep it on top. Just preventing leaks is truly the best, best action. Now, obviously, you know, there's a lot of other manufacturers that make pretty similar layouts. I do respect how, how Whitehawk kind of went about it in a little bit different way, tweaking around the uh, living room of this. And if you want to see where we have one parked and what we're asking on a given day, check those links in the video description, scan that QR code off your phone if you're watching on TV. And whether you're curious or whether you're serious, we'll have it listed there. Anything we have on our site, we have listed with pricing. And we don't do hidden dealer fees. Sorry for the convenience. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.